Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. I'm Karen Rice and I'm going to be painting some beautiful hellebores in watercolour. All the materials I'm using in this video will be in the description below and just click on show more and it will take you to that description. I've masked out the stamens in the centre of the flower with my masking pen. It has now dried and I'm painting wet on dry and I'm using this beautiful pink from Daniel Smith, Rhodonite Genuine. It's a lovely, beautiful pink, but you could use something like Permanent Rose or even Opera Rose. So I'm just now painting this wet on dry, pushing clean water towards the paint these lovely dark edges as you can see it's starting to develop there and it gets lots of yummy texture as well so i'm going to continue doing this pushing the paint around putting the paint on wet on dry and then dropping colors in wet on wet it's a really nice way of painting any flowers so it's a lovely color i'm going to be using now which is rose of ultramarine it's a stunning color um, it's not obviously ultramarine, but it's got this lovely purpley tone to it. It's quite a toned down colour. But again, if you don't have this colour, which is not a problem, you could always use ultramarine with a little bit of pink mixed. And as you can see, again, I'm getting some water, lots of water. And I'm pushing this paint towards the edge. As you can see, you get a lovely dark edge there. Now, this is a lovely little technique here. I'm using just a mapping pen with a sharp point on the nib and I'm scratching into the paper to create some veins in those petals um, so that's quite effective little technique there. Just to warn you though this is permanent so be sure that you want to put those veins where they are otherwise you know you can't undo it. So I'm just mixing a little bit of the blue now with the yellow and I've just made a little bit of a sludgy green and now dropping in a little bit more of the pink and you get this sort of really neutral warm colour which is really pretty. Now the paint, the previous petal is still wet, I haven't blow dried anything. Um, if you are worried about that give it a blow dry before you do your next petal I just leave a very small white gap so it allows me as you can see just what I'm doing there it allows me then to paint the next petal without blow drying I mean I know you have to blow dry sometimes but I actually think it makes your paintings a little bit dull and I like my paintings to dry naturally as much as I can see here I'm dropping in colours wet into wet to give lots of different shades on this beautiful hellebore. I'm using the rose of ultramarine with a touch of the pink I'm just again painting wet on dry being careful not to touch the uh, petal on the left and I'm just putting the paint down you don't want to put the paint down too dry you want to make sure it's a bit of moisture in it because when you come to push the water which is what I'm doing now the paint won't move because it gets stuck into the paper. Be aware of that and try and put down the paint a little bit wetter. I'm just mixing up some a neutral colour now. So I've made a green, I'm adding a bit of the pink. And I'm going to use this shade to put on the edge of the petal so it really brings out that lovely dark yummy colour that's on the edge there. So I'm just wetting this other petal again, being careful not to touch the one next to it with clean water and just sort of repeating this process. Isn't it lovely when watercolour does that and it sort of spreads out and has a, almost has a mind of its own, wonderful. So again, I'm mixing up the Rose of Ultramarine in the yellow with the pink and just popping that in the edge of the this petal here as well. It makes a lovely dark. They're such lovely colours actually, these Daniel Smith colours. They create some lovely textured effects as well. I really like working with them. They seem to move really well. But you could just use three primary colours. You could use ultramarine, lemon yellow and permanent rose for this painting as well. I just thought I'd like to, you know, have a little play with these Daniel Smith colours and show you. So I'm just going to paint now the bud. Um, I really love painting buds or anything sort of interesting like this. 
um, but just using the same colours really, paint starting off wet in wet on dry and then just dropping in water and now I've got to a stage with, with if you can see from my palette where I've got lots of different shades of colours from previous mixes so I can drop those in as well and you can really start to paint a little bit more freely. So I'm going to start painting some of the foliage now and I've mixed up the Mayenne blue with some of the Hansa yellow with a touch of the Rose of Ultramarine. You get a lovely sort of sludgy green which is quite a natural looking green. So again I'm painting these wet on dry and sort of just all the lighter shades to begin with. In watercolour we like to work light to dark so these are my, my light shades I'm, I'm putting on now. One thing that I did find really interesting mixing the pink and the yellow together you get this beautiful orange colour so I was I really liked that. I'm just about to paint the stem now and what I really found you get some lovely brown colours using the rose of ultramarine with the green so the green would be the yellow and the blue mixed up together and look at that it's a gorgeous brown it really does look quite natural and uh, I was quite impressed with that so I'm just sort of painting this stem now dropping in a bit of the brownie colour with some green as well and you can see there the paint's almost quite neat and it creates some lovely dark textured effects. Getting some colours now ready for my background. I've got some a really limey light yellow green I'm going to mix up a lovely orange with the pink and the yellow and I'm going to make a slightly darker green just adding a touch more blue and a touch of the rose of ultramarine I love painting backgrounds like this because you've got a flower that's in focus and you've got this fuzzy background um, just like the camera's out of focus but it creates some depth in your painting and it's a really simple way of doing a background so always mix up your colors first don't have them too dark because they're going to come forward so quite watery and pretty sort of colors wet the surface and then paint wet in wet So I'm just sprinkling on a little bit of sea salt now and hopefully that's going to create some texture in my background later. It's always a good idea to put the salt on when the paint is wet and once it's dry brush the salt off with your hand or a piece of kitchen towel. So my painting is dry now, I'm taking off the masking fluid with some masking tape or framing tape. Have the masking tape flat to the paper on the sticky side and it will come off quite nicely. I'm now painting the stamens in the centre of the flower just using some of the pink and the yellow, warming it up. This is wet on dry and it's just to give a bit of interest to the centre of the flower. I'm building up some darker shades now on the flower using the Rose of Ultramarine painting wet on dry and then using water to soften the edge and blend.
as you can see here I'm just working on some of the detail now here with the bud it's quite wet the surface and I'm putting in creamy paint you don't want to put the paint in too wet at this stage because you're getting into the middle sort of part of the painting so you want to build up darker washes so don't be afraid of the dark but just make sure that paint is a little bit creamier so it doesn't get all all run into each other and, and just become one color as it were that's a beautiful dark I've made there. That's using the Rose of Ultramarine, some of the Mayan Blue, and then a bit of the yellow as well, just to get that lovely dark colour for the stem. Just giving a little bit more detail to the centre of the flower here, just really using some of the colours in my palette, but it's a bit of yellow, tiny touch of blue to make a sort of a sludgy green colour. And now I'm adding a little bit of pink to that, just to warm it up slightly, just to bring the eye in. In the photograph, it isn't as dark as this, but it looks too pale in my painting. So sometimes there is a danger when you slavishly copy a photograph, they can look a bit flat. So I'm actually using a little bit of artistic license here just to kind of make it pop out. It still doesn't seem to be working for me. So I'm actually now working on darkening up the edges more so on the outside of the petals there, as you can see. So it's the same technique I used at the beginning. I'm putting the paint wet on dry and then getting clean water and pushing it down to that edge. With watercolor painting, sometimes you'll find that things do fade after they dry. So you've got to just, don't worry about that. Just go in and put some more darks in. It's absolutely fine. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. And it's just to make the, the flower look a bit more 3D as well, the way those top petals are curving over. What I'm doing here is I'm actually building up my shadow colours now using mostly the Rose of Ultramarine, which is quite a nice shadowy colour. So you can see this is my process. It's a way I paint. I paint sort of in this style. I'm always rinsing my brushes. I don't expect you all to be painting in this way. It's just to give you tips to share with you some of the things that I've experienced, etc. But when you put marks down, you might want to get some water to blend it etc always have a piece of tissue on standby to blot if you don't like something it doesn't have to stay there because you put it there you can always remove it it's not a problem so i'm just using the mapping pen again here just to scratch into the surface of that bud and just getting rid as i said getting rid of things with the tissue paper i'm building up the um, center of the flower here again with a slightly warmer yellow that's the yellow with a touch of pink and just putting in some details wet on dry tip of the brush just to mark in details. Again, if you feel it's too much, just, just take it off with the tissue. I'm just gonna put some shadow now on the inside of the hellebore. Um, I'm just using the pinky color with a little bit of the Rose of Ultramarine that did have a tiny bit of blue in it, so it's still a bit of a dark brown. Again, I'm using the colors in my palette now, so they've all intermixed, so you can really sort of create a lot of color harmony that way. I'm just gonna remove the framing tape now, just to kind of see the painting with a white edge around it, or a big white edge in this case. Um, it just gives me an idea if I need to do any more work to the flower and sometimes waiting 24 hours is a good idea and having a good look at it the next day. That's exactly what I did and now I'm using this mapping pen just to create a little bit more texture to the inside of the flower and I'm using the Rose of Ultramarine with a tiny touch of blue in there and as you saw there I've just sped the video up forward just to put some more markings on the petals of the flowers, just building up a little bit more shading. I'm just putting a few more marks on the petals with this mapping pen quite nice to use and I'm obviously going to give it a beautiful spatter at the end of course why wouldn't I it's such a fun way to finish off a watercolor I do hope you've enjoyed this painting if you've got any questions please put them in the comments section below if you'd like to see any more videos like this please subscribe to my youtube channel happy painting bye for now